Well hello Internet and welcome to my Android Studio tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to install and configure Android Studio. I'm also going to show you how to set up GitHub and how to push to remote repositories. I'm going to cover exactly what is Gradle and the Android Studio interface. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so you may ask yourself, Eclipse is working perfectly fine, why should I use Android Studio? Well, I'm going to go over a couple of different reasons here real quick. First off, Gradle integration is going to make it very easy for you to make different versions of your same application. Doesn't sound that important, but as you develop more and more Android apps, it most definitely will be more important. So, for example, let's say you wanted to have a free app and a paid app. Well, Gradle is going to make that easy for you. Live Preview is going to show you different layouts, very easy, depending upon resolution, Android version, country and a whole bunch of other different things. Android Studio also has native support for Google Cloud. Yes, I know Eclipse has that through a plugin, but this is going to be built in and it's going to make it very easy for you to run server-side code using Google App Engine. Android Studio also includes support for JUnit and this is going to make it very easy for us to test our applications. It also is going to allow you to import remote libraries from Maven Central. Again, all this stuff is built in. Accuracy is going to be very ramped up in comparison to Eclipse code completion wise and since everything is built just to make Android apps, Android Studio is going to have a much more logical type of system because it only needs to make Android apps. And then finally, the drag and drop interface is going to save you a ton of time in regards to designing your app. Now, of course, there's many other reasons, but we will cover those whenever I create my new Android tutorial, which is coming very, very soon. So now let's go and install it. Okay, of course, the very first thing you're going to need to do is install Java. So in your terminal, in your command prompt, whatever you have, just type in java-version and hopefully something comes up. Focus on using either Java version 1.6 or Java version 1.7. 1.7 works perfectly fine on everything I've tested, so feel free to use 1.7. If you do not have it, just go to this great big giant long URL. I will put it underneath the video and you're going to just decide on what you need based off of your operating system. Okay, now that you have that installed, I'm going to show you first how to install everything on a Mac. You're going to go to developer.android.com forward slash SDK installing studio.html. Then you're going to come down here and you are going to click on download Android Studio for Mac. Whenever you do, there it's going to show you a DMG file. You are going to double click on it and then you're going to grab this icon right here and you're going to drop it in your applications folder. That is basically it. Now if you get an error that says that the DMG is damaged or something, that is just your Macintosh being silly. What we are going to do to fix that is you're going to come up here to your little Apple, click on that, and click on Preferences. This guy right here is going to open up. You're then going to click on this guy called Security and Privacy. Whenever you do, this is going to open up, and then you are going to make sure that Allow Applications Downloaded From Anywhere is checked. That is probably going to solve any problems. Definitely going to solve the problem that I mentioned. And now you're pretty much ready to go on a Mac, so let's install it on Windows. Of course, we need to install Java on Windows as well. And then we're going to go, well, let's come up here. Same exact place, developer.android.com, SDK, installing studio.html. And if you are on Windows, it's automatically going to show you the Windows version, so click on that. And then the setup wizard is going to open up for you. And you're going to click on Next. And then you can decide who you want to be able to use it, and then click on Next. And then you can put it wherever you really want to. And then you're going to click on Next. And then you have to decide what you want this to be called in your Start menu. And then hit Install. All right, so now you're going to need to add Java to your path. So what you're going to do is just click on the little Start thing down there and type in in advanced system and whenever you do you're gonna see view advanced system settings pop up you're gonna click on that then you're gonna click on the advanced tab right here and then come down here and click on environment variables then you're gonna have to figure out exactly where your version of Java is installed and there is mine and here it is and here this is and you're gonna to want to copy this or memorize it or do whatever you want because then we are going to open up the environment variables and come in here and type in Java underscore home uppercase and then you're going to type in the location for your JDK. Hit OK and you're ready to go. You have Android Studio installed. Now we need to configure it. First thing you're going to do is click on configure in this little opening screen. Then you're going to click on project defaults. Then you're going to click on project structure and whenever you do this is going to open up. Now what you need to do is locate 
take the SDK folder for Android Studio and paste it inside of there. More than likely, almost 99% of the time, it's already going to be in there. And then you're going to put whatever the directory for your Java development kit inside of here. And if they don't show up, you're going to have to click on this guy and go locate them. Pretty easy to do. Then you're going to click on OK because everything is set up properly. And we're going to come back here to the opening screen. Now there is a little bit of an error with Android Studio in regards to making sure this is compliant with Java 1.6. Just do this. Don't worry about exactly why you're doing it. It just solves any errors. So what we're going to do is click on Configure. And then we're going to click on Preferences and then we're going to come over here and click on compiler and Java compiler and then over inside of here we are going to click on this guy right here and switch it to 1.6 it normally says default switch it to 1.6 and then of course come down here and click on OK and here we are again at the opening screen now what I'm going to cover is updating the SDK manager but first off we're going to come in here and click on new project and a little project window is going to open I'm going to call this hello world and app and make sure you come in here this is going to say example select this instead and type in either a website domain name that you own or your own name no spaces of course and all lowercase you're going to define exactly where you want your project to be saved you're going to decide on whatever the minimum SDK is I pretty much just leave everything exactly the way it is you're going to make sure that this has 6.0 override and interfaces and you can do whatever you want you can play around with this stuff and see what happens and then click on create activity and then come down here and click on next okay so again we're just gonna keep everything simple we're gonna click on blank activity and next and then we're gonna come in here to main activity and click on finish and then Gradle is going to build everything for you. Whenever that's all done, this is what you're going to see on your screen. One thing you may have noticed here, and in my Android tutorial I'm going to cover exactly what all these folders do, everything is in your app folder or more specifically in your source folder in comparison to what we normally have with Eclipse where things are all over the place. But the important thing here is to get our SDK manager all updated. And to do that we're going to come up here and we're going to click on this little Android thing with the arrow pointing down and whenever you do the SDK manager is going to open up you're going to click right here where it says updates new and you're gonna click on install three packages and then this guy's gonna pop up you're gonna select this right here you're gonna click on accept and you're gonna click on accept license and you're gonna hit install and everything is going to install for you pretty easy now let's set up a device for us to use whenever you open this up you might have X's all over the place no problem we're gonna fix that we're gonna click on new and create a brand new device and this is going to represent an emulator inside of Android Android Studio. So let's click on new and then this guy's going to pop up. And this is what I have used sort of. You're going to see in a second I change one little thing here. I'm going to type in Nexus 7. Da -da 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 -da. I'll take a picture of this and I will put it a link to it on my description under the video or of course you can just look at this right here or pause the screen or do whatever you want and that works out good for me and I'm gonna click on OK and whenever you do that you're gonna see a check mark here that is green and that means we are able to use this device so that is super then once you have this whole entire thing installed let's click on start and let's start our emulator and you can just click on launch and then the emulator is going to start for us and whenever it's done this is what it's gonna look like now whenever you do that the first time you're gonna to say to yourself geez oh man this emulator is terribly slow well we're gonna to try to fix that if your computer has an Intel microprocessor you can do this if not you're out of luck you have a very slow emulator sorry so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the Android SDK manager this guy up here little arrow pointing down and we're going to come down here inside of Android 4.4.2 and we're going to put a check mark inside of here and click on install one package this is going to pop up. You're going to select this, hit accept, and then you're going to click on install. For some reason, you cannot check accept license. If you can, check it, but for some reason, normally it doesn't allow me to do that. Now I'm going to hit install. Then what I'm going to do is come up here to this guy right here that has the little Android device behind his head, and I'm going to come inside of here. I'm going to check on this, and I'm going to click on edit. And then all this is going to pop up. I'm going to click up here where it says Intel Atom. Make sure that is set properly. Make sure I have a check mark in use host GPU. I did not change anything else and I'm gonna click on okay. Now you're gonna see your emulator opens up very, very quickly, so that's awesome. Now, of course, most of the time you're not gonna wanna use an emulator, you're gonna wanna use a regular Android device because it's going to update immediately. Now, if you are using Linux or you're using a Mac, 
all of that stuff is almost always going to work immediately. Just plug a USB cable from your computer into your device, everything works. If, however, you're on Windows, you're going to have to come to this location and you're going to have to install some drivers to get all of that stuff to work. Okay, now let's come in here and figure out how to set up GitHub. What we're going to do first off is we're going to come up here, or if you are in whatever you're in, just click on Preferences in your Windows. And whenever you do, you're going to see this guy right here. And what we're going to do, of course, you need a GitHub subscription or an account, free, whatever. I have a tutorial on GitHub if you don't know how to use it. And what you're going to do after you have set up an account is type in github.com and whatever your login is and whatever your password is. And then you are going to come over here and click on test and you should see connection successful and you're going to click on OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a master password inside of Android Studio. You're going to create one of those and you're going to click on set password. And then to continue on, you're going to see all kinds of new things inside of VCS. And VCS stands for Version Control System. Like I said, I have a tutorial for GitHub. It's underneath the video again. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on Enable Version Control Integration. After you do that, we're going to come down here and we're going to click on Git. And then we're going to click on OK. And you're going to see down here, Created Git Repository in Users. It's going to be whatever the location for where you are saving your projects is. Okay. Then we're going to go back up into VCS and come down here and go to Import into Version Control and go Share Project on GitHub. Click on that and you're going to type in whatever you want the repository name to be and a description of exactly what this project is and click on share. And then you're going to have to define what files you want to send to GitHub. You can just put a check here and a check here and it is going to send everything. And then you can type in a message defining exactly what you're doing here. Initial commit is perfectly fine for the first one and then click on OK. Now if you have any type of problems what you're going to want to do is go to what Whatever directory you have all your files in and you're going to want to click on git remote dash v. Now if you see this without the username you have for github that can cause some problems. So what we are going to do instead is type in this long thing git remote set url origin and then type out whatever this is. Don't type in new think tank, type in whatever your github user ID is and all of this other stuff. Okay, so that is a way to solve any problems you might come into. Now that we have all that set up, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here in our project window and we are going to select every single thing that we want to upload to GitHub. And then we're going to come down here and go Git. And then we're going to come over here and click on Commit Files. Now, if you don't want to use GitHub, that's perfectly fine. You can skip this part. But if you do, and it's pretty nice, I think, anyway, then you're going to come in here and whatever you have changed is what's going to be committed. And you can see that's selected right there. You're going to want to come in here and type in whatever your email address is on GitHub. And then come down here and click on Commit and Push. And then you can see I went and put a whole bunch of things inside of here. You can come down here and create a branch. I just called this setup and then you can click on push. Then you're going to come over here and make sure you have all your files selected. You're going to right click, go to git, go to repository and push. And then this guy's going to pop up. You're going to click on that, type in your branch and click on push. And if we go and check on GitHub, you can see that it is all loaded up there. So that is how to set up GitHub. All right, so now you can see Gradle is building my project here for me. And I'm just going to run through the Android Studio interface here real quickly. And here it is, and here is a tip, and I'm just going to click on Close. And you can see over here is the preview window, and it is going to make a little preview version of the little application that I have inside of here, and all this stuff is auto-generated. And while it's doing that, I'm going to come over here. This guy right here are all of your project files, and if you do not see that there, what you're going to do is just go to view tool windows and project and if you don't see the little preview window that's going to show my app you just go down here and click on preview okay so that's how you get those to open up and there you can see it's just real simple it just says hello world all right so let's come in here and let's just play around with a couple different things just so you can get acclimated to the interface before we do that i'm going to go in here and i'm going to increase the text size on our screen so to do that we just go android studio and preferences and then we're going to come down here to where it says ide settings and click on the editor we're actually going to open this up and we're going to click on colors and fonts right there then what we're going to do is come down here and click on 
font and you're going to see this right here and it's going to be set as default. Now if I want to create a new one I'm going to click on save as right like this and let's say I want to have Monaco large. Click on OK. Now it's going to allow me to come in here and select something different. It's going to get all my fonts for me. You may or may not have Monaco. And I'm going to come down here and click on Monaco and I'm going to switch this to 34. See that's much bigger. You're going to be able to see everything better. And then I'm going to click on Apply and OK. Alright, now you're going to be able to see everything much better on our screen. Now let's say we want to add an image to our little application. Now I'm going to make this a little bit silly. Let's go and open up the folder and wherever you have your project say I'm going to go to Documents, and I have it in this folder right here. And you can see right there, there's Hello World. Now you're going to go into App, and then we're going to go into Source, and we're going to go into Main, and then we're going to go into Resources and Drawable HDPI. This is where I'm going to save my images. And here is your icon, by the way. If you want to change the icon for your app, you could just change it right there. Now I have some things laying around here from my last tutorial. Let's say I want this splatter background right here as well as this picture of a zombie. I'm just going to drag both of them inside of there and there they are. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to change them though to lowercase. So I'm going to change this to splatter and the background. I'm going to put a underscore inside of here and background and zombie. I'm going to change this to lowercase as well. So there it is and there it is. Perfect. Okay, I can close this and I can close this too. Now you're going to see if you come in here to drawable HDPI and open this up, you're going to see splatter background and zombie are inside of there. So that's good. Now if I want to change the background for my little application I'm making here, uh, what I did was I clicked on design down here. There you are. And I was inside of Activity Main. This is where we're going to make our changes. So let's say I wanted to put a different background inside of here. Well, like I said, I'm going to get more into this later. I'm going to click on the relative layout. The text view, which is the whole world you see there, is contained inside of this relative layout. Now I could come down here and say I want to change my background for this. I'm going to click on background right inside of there. Click on this right here. This window is going to open up and there is tons of things that are built into this. But I'm going to scroll way down to the bottom and I'm going to go splatter background right there. And you're going to see the splatter background is now inside of the application. Now let's say that I want to, what I did in a previous tutorial is I created a zombie button. So let's say I want to create a zombie button inside of here. I could just come over here and go image button drag this guy over here. It's going to try to position it. Relative layout isn't perfect for that, of course. And let's say that I want it right there. Just drag it inside of there. And I can come in here and I can grab these little arms and drop it right there. And then for this, I can go and also set a different background. So just click on background and click on this right here. And then I want to get my zombie. Click on that. There it is. Click on OK. And you're going to see that it's automatically going to fit the zombie inside of there. And this is going to be a button. So I'm just playing around. If you're wondering, I'm not making a full scale application here or anything. Now let's say that you want to have a Spanish version. Like I said before, strings.xml is going to have all your default strings that are going to show up in your application. Let's say that if the person has a device that is set for Spanish versus English, you want it to automatically go and convert it to their language of choice. You're going to come in here to resource and right click on this and go to new and go into directory. Click on that. And we are going to type in values dash ES. That's the country code. And we're going to hit on OK. There's values right there. And what we can do is we can just copy strings.xml. So let's just select all of this copy and we just call this file and we're going to call this strings.xml exactly the same as the other one hit OK and then we can paste inside of here and then we could change this to a Spanish version so let's say we want to go hola and we can go hola yes I know that says hello earth and then for settings we could go config duration there we go and then save and now we're going to have a Spanish version and if you don't believe me we can click on activity main come down here click on text and you can see over here. Now if we want to change to our Spanish version, I'm going to click over here on the little globe and change it to Spanish and you can see everything automatically changed. So that is what's cool about this. 
go to default and everything's back to the way that it was. I'm just doing a real quick run through of a whole bunch of different things. Whenever we start developing apps, it's going to be much easier to understand everything and get going. Now let's say that you want to open a display that's going to show any errors that you might have. Just go into View, Tool Windows, and then you're going to click on Android. And whenever you do, you see everything's opening here. And down here, you're going to see what is called the Log Cat, which is going to display your device log messages and any errors you might have. And that brings us to Gradle and exactly what it is. Now I'm just going to give you a basic run through of Gradle. And later on, I'm going to go into debugging and all that stuff. This tutorial is getting a little long as it is. So let's just go through Gradle. Now, unlike Eclipse, all of your project files, like I had said before, are going to be stored in your source directory. And this is specifically done to allow Gradle to provide you with the option to have, like I said before, numerous build variants. Gradle is also going to manage your project dependencies, whether they are local or remote repositories. If Gradle is provided with signing settings, it can automatically sign your APK files during the build process. Gradle also can be set up to automatically obfuscate your classes during the build process using ProGuard. Again, going to get more into that later. Gradle also is going to generate a test APK, so you don't have to create a completely separate test project just to be able to test things. And where all of these different rules are set is down here in Build Gradle. Now this is going to be very basic because this is a hello world thing that doesn't really do anything, but I'm just going to run through it very quickly. This first line up here is going to define that this Android project is an application. You're then going to define some other different parameters for your build. You're going to have your target version of Android set right here. You're going to have the minimum and your target version of Android set right here. This is just the current version of your code, starts off at 1.0. You're going to see right here that ProGuard is currently not being used. Again, that obfuscates your code by basically renaming classes and fields to different obscure names, so it's harder to understand exactly what's going on. And then down here you can see in the dependency area that we want to include in the build any jar files that are in the libs directory. And here what this guy is saying is that we need the Android support library version version 19. You might be asking yourself exactly what are dependencies. Dependencies are basically just what is needed to build the application. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of tips on how to use Android Studio. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the questions and comments section below. Otherwise, till next time.